Huawei, uh, do, do you guys speak Chinese? Do, do you speak Mandarin? I took a lot of courses, a couple of words, yes. Yeah, I guess we need a good AI to translate to yes. Mandarin. I've been told that Huawei means something like splendid achievement, yes. right? Yes. So I think it sets the tone properly for Huawei's ambitions. Huawei is a brand that is very active in B2C and B2B. In B2C, we know them for being the world number three mobile phone vendor. They sell 35 million uh, units per year just uh, behind uh, Apple and, uh, and Samsung. It's even bigger in B2B. In B2B, since 2012, Huawei became the world number one telecommunication equipment vendor. They overpassed uh, the likes of uh, Nokia, Alcatel, Lucent, Ericsson, and Cisco to become number one uh, five years ago. The company is like 200,000 employees worldwide, generates 80 billion revenue, and it's profitable. That's around $5 billion revenue per year. And despite its sheer size, it's keeps growing at a hefty 15% on a yearly basis, which is pretty amazing. So I think the name is proper. And uh, Huawei has something in common with other uh, tech champions in the world, such as uh, Facebook, uh, SAP, Samsung, Fujitsu. Or they do have a research lab in France. So, and that lab is focused on, on AI. So thank you very much for being here. Congratulations, Huawei, for the amazing achievement. And uh, I think it's fantastic to have companies like Huawei doing some research and AI in France. Thank you for being here, uh, Mirwan. And perhaps before we deep dive in AI, you could introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Mirwan Dubar. I'm a director of uh, the Mathematical and Algorithmic Sciences Lab of, Par of Huawei in Paris. Uh, we established the lab in 2014. Uh, the lab has now 150 people, not exclusively in AI, all uh, basically with PhD degrees. Uh, the part which is related to mathematics and algorithm is roughly around 100 people. The rest of 50 people work on design. They work also on image processing embedded on, on mobile phones. On the 100 people, we work on, on four domains. One is the evolutions of the networks on 4G, 5G, of course, and everything around virtualization and SDN and AV. And the last part is, of course, what we call big data for telecom, which is basically the, 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 um, the purpose of, of, of this, of this uh, fire chat. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Uh, before we go in, into some details about your labs and, uh, and, and your ambition, can you tell us a little bit about the AI scene in China? Do, do you have Chinese AI? You know, China in, in IT science is pretty strong. We know that the, the, f the world's fastest computer is actually Chinese. And we also heard about the first quantum satellite telecommunication. Uh, that's a beautiful achievement. We don't know much about the AI scene. How would you say, how vibrant is it? Well, um the companies are very active. I mean, uh, of course, uh, many of you know more, I would say, Baidu, Tencent, and all these companies. So um, they've been definitely um, growing very fast. Um, there's a lot of investments being poured uh, on AI in China. Uh, a lot of recruitments, massive recruitments. Uh, Andrew Ng was uh, recruited uh, by Baidu. And uh, basically, there's a lot of investment. That's from, the, I would say, the industrial part. From the governmental part, there's also some huge national programs which are being built. Uh, last month, China uh, announced a national program on AI uh, to build up, of course, uh, what I call AI towards 2030, to build, of course, the possibility of China to be one of the leaders uh, in the world on, in the AI field. Well, that, that, that's really cool. Thank you. So now let's go back to your, uh, to your own lab. Tell us the ambition, the objectives, and then perhaps we could talk about your challenge later. Yeah, so uh, for people who are not familiar with, with, uh, with Huawei, Huawei is in three segments. One is what we call the carrier. Basically, we do all the base stations, network, uh, infrastructure, fiber. The other is the consumer uh, domain, which is basically the mobile phones, but also the smartwatches, tablets, and then the, the, the domain of enterprise. Um, since I would say two or three years, uh, Huawei uh, has been, so on the, on the carrier side, of course, Huawei is number one. On the mobile side, as you said, we're number two, number three, depending on, on, uh, on, on the number of uh, phones which are sold and on enterprise, then I think we're fourth, fifth. Um, since two years, uh, Huawei has been um, looking heavily at um, implementing AI solutions in the network. Uh, on the care side, we've been having a lot of requests from uh, our uh, 
our clients, which are mainly operators, to, uh, to have what we call SUN uh, systems. SUN means self-organized networks. Basically a network where you have a sort of uh, what I call a, a wireless brain, just like the Google brain, which is able to optimize completely the network whenever there's a failure, uh, we can detect and, and uh, the next failure which is going to happen. We can have also predictive analytics to know when there's going to be more traffic in one point on another point. And, um, and basically this is very useful for operators because it reduces the OPEX, the operating expenses. And yeah. yeah <clears throat> let, let me uh, ask you a question on that to, to, to go back to, your, to the split between consumer and telco. J just to go back to the fact that uh, Huawei is number one telco, that's 45 out of the top 50 telco operators are powered by this technology. So I guess it's very important. In AI, we see a lot of things happening in the consumer-facing apps, especially yeah. in the, in the, in the uh, cell phone, of course. Uh, image recognition, translation, personal assistant, and the likes. In the telco, we know less what's happening because it's behind the scenes. It's, it's infrastructure, it's B2B. How do you split your research between consumer-facing uh, as opposed to telco management, I would say? So our, our main effort of, of AI is, is uh, I mean, uh, our main effort in AI is, 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 is worldwide based. We have a team in Paris of around now more than 10 people. We're recruiting heavily for people who are interested. Uh, we have around 200 people around the world working for uh, what we call Noah's Ark. You can check their website, which is based in Hong Kong, working on AI. Now, we have a split depending, of course, on the request of our customers and clients. So we were mostly focusing on the part which is the carrier. Now, uh, where there are new chipset that we release, we're focusing more on mobile AI, which is related to the mobile phone. Uh, on the network side, it's more predictive analytics. On the mobile phone, it's more making a smartphone becoming an intelligent phone. I talked about it yesterday. It's mostly about a smartphone actually now is more a personal assistant. So it's not really smart. Basically, because you tell to the phone what to do. The idea is, of course, that this tel the phone starts su making suggestions to you, telling you, oh, you're sick, I'm going to take you to the doctor at 5 o'clock, and then making an appointment to go to the cinema, and then booking immediately on Uber, the car and everything, all this. So you're having some kind of discussion with your mobile phone and making all this. Of course, the work is not just algorithmic. It's also on the chipset because there's also work being done. We work at the same time on developing a specific tailored chipset for that, and on top of that, algorithms which are able to tackle uh, 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 all the issues we have. Oh, I didn't know that. Go, go back to the chipset. Like, do you have something like the Tensor uh, processing unit or this sort of thing? So our new, our, our new um, product called the Kirin 970, which is going to be released on the Mate ne next week, uh, which is our new, new phone. Yeah, we have a dedicated what we call an NPU, a neural processing unit which basically, of course, implements. We've been testing it recently on images and uh, on, I would say, benchmark images where um, we've been doing some tests. We've been able to, able to process more than 2,000 images per minute in terms of classification. So, sorry again, your NPU is embedded in the cell phone? Yes. Oh, all that, the that's cool. Okay. Yes. The TPU, of course, is from, uh, from Google, the Tensor yes. uh, processing unit. That's very impressive. Thank you. So AI, it's a bit like a frenzy in, in the world today. And yeah. uh, as an investor, we do invest in AI, and we meet companies that are super brilliant, but have sometimes some difficulty to scale because of hiring. It's extremely difficult to find good engineers, data scientists, mathematicians, and people who, who know everything about data. How do you, do, first of all, do you face this issue and this challenge in China? And how do you face this challenge in France as a foreign company? Yeah, we're facing it everywhere, and I think we're not the only company trying to find spots where we can hire. As you know, the scenery actually now is in the Silicon Valley, New York, Montreal, Paris, London, and also China. So that's where our team are based. When we established the lab in 2014, we were not fo focusing on machine learning. We were mostly focusing on mathematicians and algorithms with people doing signal processing. We were able to ramp up rapidly the lab. It was not so difficult, still a bit, to do recruit. Actually now, hiring at this moment, researchers with a PhD degrees, with a bit of experience, just a bit of experience, it's extremely complicated. On the China scenery, it's the same. Extreme fierce competition with Baidu, Tencent, us, and major companies, and also Al Alibaba startups, also, I Alibaba guess. also, trying to hire. In China also, even though we're getting a number of I would say Chinese expats who did their study in, univer in American universities coming back, we're still getting a shortage of, of, of researchers being able. So of course, we're trying to deploy our effort wherever 
we can find great people we can recruit. And basically our strategy is to deploy our research centers where we can find the resources to make them happen. So I guess it's totally a testimony to the quality of the ecosystem regarding AI in France. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, um, Huawei did a study in 2013 before establishing the center, and, and, that's, and from that study came out that France was extremely good in mathematics, was extremely good in design, meaning uh, fashion, and extremely good also in IoT. And that's basically where we have deployed our resources to be able to work closely with the ecosystem uh, because we have, as you know, a good, a good scenery around IoT, Internet of Things. Fashion is also a big thing. So we have a lab of 12, 12 people trying to design our future phones, design in terms of, of drawing, things like that. Fashion are, are also uh, uh, smart watches, things like that. And also the big effort being with on mathematicians, yeah. Well, that's cool, thanks. How does your lab work with relationship to your other labs and to the mothership back in China? Because in research, you need some sort of uh, independence or free spirit, I'm not trying to follow procedures too much. And when you work with a foreign company, it's quite difficult to actually synchronize all of that. Yeah, as, as a big company, as you said, Huawei is 180,000 people. 45% uh, of the employees do R&D. It's quite uh, unique in the world to, to have nearly half of uh, the company doing R&D. We have what we call research arms, like many companies, which is uh, around 10,000 people of pure researchers which are deployed worldwide. In Europe, we have 1,800 people. It's called the Euro European Research Institute, where uh, the major part is in Munich, and uh, the, the second biggest part is in Paris, basically, of mathematics. In Munich, we work mostly with Industry 4.0, uh, and depending on where we are. How we work is, is, is very simple. We have two types of research being done. One is what we call business driven, meaning the businesses, the different business of uni units of Hawaii provide some specific problems for which we have to solve them. It's mostly 30% of our effort. And then we have 70% of our effort, which is mostly research driven, meaning we propose crazy ideas, for the years 2020, 25, 22, depending. So this is typically for 5G. And basically, we do a roadmap for that and implement it within our, our company, working closely with the different labs around Europe, but also with our uh, colleagues at head, in headquarters in Shenzhen. Thank you. Uh, we are running out of time, but I have a specific. Yes, you don't need to tell me. I can read that. Thank you. There is a question I need to ask you. I don't know if there are any researchers or startups here. My, my real core question to conclude is how does your lab work or not in collaboration with A, the academic research in France, and B, the startup scene? So we have, since um, 2014, established many, I would say, contract bases with um, a lifetime of around three years with different uh, high-class institutes in France, typically Eurocom, Centrale Supélec, Telecom Bretagne, Paris 6, where we have some, I would say, top-level professors working with us on specific tasks, either BU-driven or, in general, we have uh, what we call an HRP flagship where we announce some of the things we want to do in the future and then they, they announce it. And then within the startup, um, um, I would say, scenery, um, we launch every year something called the Digital Impulse, which is a program of uh, competition between startups where we select a subset of startup and bring them back to China basically to have some close interactions when we have selected uh, the good ones to work closely with our businesses in Huawei. That's amazing, and can you tell us how to find this information? Because I, I know a lot of startups who would love to work with you guys. Perfectly. So we have, you can check Digital Impulse Huawei on the website. There are some contacts within Huawei where you can get all the information. We do a touring in different places in uh, France. We're not just located in Paris also because uh, startups are not only in Paris. We go to Lille. France is AI, not Paris exactly. is AI. Exactly. And uh, the recent one was made, by the way, in Nice. And then you go there, and there's a whole process on how you can apply and then get the contact. Beside that, of course, when it's more research-oriented, less uh, something that can be, I would say, transferred within a short time, then, of course, the same thing on the website. You get the contacts of the research people in the labs on which you can propose some ideas and on which you can start some kind of collaboration. Yeah. Thank you. Miran Deba, the head of the research lab for Huawei in France.